So we're going to see several different implementations of threads. And in this video, we're going to talk about the threads that were introduced in the C11 standard. Now, we're not going to get too much into detail about the specifics. For the most part, most threading libraries, especially with C and C++, work pretty much the same. And for the most part, we're going to focus on the things that are common between the different implementations. So the C11 standard added support for threads. So there's a couple things. There's a specifier we can use when we declare a variable to tell the compiler that this variable has thread local scope. And what that means is it's initialized when the thread starts and its scope is limited to just that single thread. Remember with threads, they share a memory space. And so if you have, for example, a global variable, if it's updated in one thread, then that update is visible to all the other threads. The thread local specifier says that even if it's a global variable, its scope is still inside that thread. So it's a global variable in the thread, but it's global only inside that thread. It's not global to the whole program. So there's a thread type, thread T, that is implementation defined. This is how we keep track of the thread IDs. There's a thread create function that creates a thread. Thread join waits for a thread to end. And then there's also some utility functions such as thread equal and thread current. Thread current returns the ID of the current thread. And then thread equal will check to see if two thread IDs refer to the same thread. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of the functions that are available. In fact, we're not even going to cover all of these. But if you want to go into more detail, there's a lot of references you can seek out to see all the thread functionality that exists in the C11 standard. So let's take a look at some source code. So I already have a shell of a program written. I have a global variable right here. And then I have two functions, thread one and thread two. And they pretty much do the same thing with some slight differences. So thread one counts up to 12, and then it sleeps for a second in between each iteration. It also updates the global variable. When it's done, it prints that it's at the end of the thread, and it prints the value of the global variable. Thread two iterates with a for loop three times, and it sleeps for three seconds at each iteration. And it never updates the global variable, but it does print it out every time it has output. And in my main method, I'm going to call both thread functions. Now, again, these functions are called thread, but I haven't actually done anything with threads yet. I'm going to create two threads in a, in a few moments, one with thread one, one with thread two. But for now, I want you to see just what the functions do and how they perform without being in threads. So once they execute, we print out that the threads are complete. We print out the value of the global variable and what each of these returned. So let's compile this and run it. And so you can see this is going really slowly because thread one, the function is executing. And it takes a long time because if you'll remember, we're sleeping for one second each time. And thread two looks like it started. Notice we've indented the output there. And it's actually going even slower than thread one because it prints out every three seconds. And I'm going to change this to less than or equal to so that we actually get a full three iterations. But I won't run it. We'll just see that next time it runs. Now, you'll notice with our current program, we run thread one, the function thread one, and then we run the function called thread two. But most of the time that these are executing, they're just sleeping. They're not doing anything. So there's no reason not to take turns. Do thread one, and then when you sleep, check to see, do I need to do anything with thread two and so forth. So I'm going to create two threads, and I'll need IDs for both of those. And instead of calling the functions, I'm going to call thread create, and I'm going to pass the address of the ID so that gets filled in. And then I'm going to pass the function that I want to call, and then I'm going to pass its parameter. So notice that this is a void pointer parameter, and that was intentional. I'm not going to pass any parameters in this case, so I'm just going to pass null. However, since this is a void pointer, I could pass a pointer to anything. So if, even, if, even though there's only one argument, I could create a structure to put multiple values in if I, if I wanted to pass multiple values. But for this, for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to pass values yet. So now I'll copy and paste the same thing, and I'll call that with thread2. And I need to call these functions correctly. So this should be thread1. This should be thread2. So now let's run our code. So that's a warning. We could ignore that because we'll actually come back and use those return values in a moment. So when we run this, ah, notice we didn't actually generate a executable because we have an undefined reference to thread create. So we need to build 
with the pthreads library, which is dash L for library, and then pthread is the name of the library. That's because GCC uses pthreads to implement the C11 threads. And now when I run, notice nothing happened. Now think about why that is for a moment. So what's going on here is, if you'll remember, the threads run inside the other process. Well, I create two threads, then I print some output, and then I exit. So my main process is exiting. So these threads never have a chance to run. So what I need to do is wait for the threads to start. And I'll add a comment that that's where we're creating. And now we're going to wait for the threads to complete. And that's the thread join function. So we want thread one to complete. And we'll put that return value in return one. And we'll wait for thread two. And now notice no errors. And notice thread one has started. And thread two has also started. And so you can see thread two over here. Couple things. Notice only thread one was updating the global variable, but you can see thread two is seeing those changes because it's a global variable. You'll also notice that for every one time we run thread two, it seems like we run thread one three times. And of course, that makes sense because this sleeps for three seconds, which gives thread one the opportunity to run three times. Now, there's no guarantee. You'll notice here that thread two executed first. There's no guarantee that that will happen. One of the difficult things with working with threads is, is trying to get the threads to cooperate and to share resources equally and to not fight over access to things like output. And we're not really going to discuss that here since this is just an introductory video, but it is something to keep in mind. You want to make sure that the code you write and especially the libraries you use all are aware that there could potentially be running into threads. And so they need to have facilities built into them so that there's some sort of synchronization going on. Now, this is a global variable, and suppose for whatever reason my program needs a global variable. However, I don't want it shared amongst the threads, which kind of makes it not a global variable. Well, we can create a thread local variable, and I'll call it thread counter. Now, in thread one, I'll increment thread counter, and in thread two, I'll multiply it each time by ii. And then in my output, I will add thread counter. so that we can see what's going on with that. And I'll copy this line to here and change that to thread two. So again, now I have this global variable that I've already seen what happens with it. It's definitely shared between the threads and then we'll see what happens with thread counter. And I'll actually do the same thing here. Let me copy and paste this. And I'll do the same here. So we'll print the value of global variable and thread counter at the beginning and end of the main function's execution as well. And so now when I compile and I'm running this, and you can see just as before, we're taking turns between the two functions because each function is running in its own thread. Now here, thread two is over and we need to add some indentation there to get that to work. But notice its thread counter is zero. And in thread one, the thread counter is 12. So let's see why this is. At the same time, we add the two tabs here to put that in the right column. And I think what we need to do is initialize thread counter to, to one here. Because it's initialized to zero right here. And when we multiply anything by zero, we get zero. So I think that should give us what we want for this example. So I'm going to compile and run. And then you can see it's starting the threads. The thread counter in the main function is zero. In thread two, you can see the global variable being modified, even though it's only updated in thread one. When thread two is over, notice its thread counter is six. One times two times three. Notice the thread counter of thread one is 12. It increments 12 times. And then in the main function, the thread counter is zero because it's never modified there. Each of those separate threads gets a different version. Now, what happens if before I start the threads, I say something like thread counter equals 10, and I will speed this output up 
so that you don't have to wait for it. So notice thread counter is still six in thread two, 12 in thread one, and now it's 10 in the original thread. So even though I modified thread counter before I started the threads, once the thread was created, it was initialized to its original value zero in both threads. So as you're designing code with threads, you have to ask yourself, do I want this to be global? Do I want this to be thread local? And there's also considerations to how you want to pass values to the threads and so forth. Again, beyond the scope of what we're trying to cover here, the idea here is just so that you can see how C11 threads work.